I'm so glad we have these all-stars here, these people who really devoted their lives to evolution, to conscious evolution. So thank you, Geraldine, Marina, everyone for being here. Yes, Geraldine, go ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. It's been so wonderful up until this point, and I'm so happy to be here to contribute uh, some little information as well. <laughs> um, well, I'd love to share my screen. I'm going to talk about the morphogenetic field from the perspective um, of how it affects us, how we're affecting us, what does it mean for our holographic DNA? How do we use that information for this evolutionary process? And uh, just give you a little clearer picture as to what it is. I'm a very visual person. I feel like visuals sometimes help us link the dots between how our everyday actions is affecting this collective. So I'm gonna share a little bit about that. Let's, uh, these are the main points that I wanna share with you and I'm just gonna show uh, what each one of those actually means. Um, we're gonna break it down. So in the morphic genetic field, the human organism is a hologram of self-organized information. Um, and the human organism is, and, and Alan kind of went into the, you know, what, what that is, he broke that down a little bit and I'll go into that a, a little bit more as well. Um, the human organism is a fractal projection of its origin of source. Um, so when, when this source uh, information uh, fract is, is uh, becoming fractal, uh, encasing into these physical form that we are, this self-organized information knows how and what to project into the physical form by its resonance. So how we, how we are essentially uh, moving through time and space in order to be encased into this physical form, which is a hologram of this intelligence. Um, I, I, an example about uh, how this uh, morphogenetic field functions, it has an intelligence, it has instructions, it's an instruction in order to create the form. And so for example, experiments that were done to, to show us that uh, were experiments with a ple planarian worm in which they removed the eyes surgically and by stimulating other parts of the organism, the eye rebuilt itself on its own. And so this is how, uh, you know, we, we are looking at the morphogenetic field as a set of instructions. It's a construct of instructions. There's an intelligence to that, that without any kind of genetic modification, the organism in itself can create itself. It can create its own form. We also see that with phantom limbs in that we are, uh, you know, people that lose an arm uh, are able to connect. And it's almost as if they feel that they're moving their arm within the body. Um, and yeah, there is a holographic network to the parts of our body. So we also see that with our, our thoughts and our memory, how memory is stored within the body. The memory is not stored in one location in the brain or in one location in the body. It's an entire holistic network of information and data that is being stored. We also see that in pranic healing examples where we are healing cancer from the physical body and through the thoughts and the intentions through that network, we are removing and changing uh, the structure of the physical, um, you know, form in which there is a stagnation of information, we are moving through that and all of that, all of this is occurring through this invisible field uh, that is invisible to our to our human eyes. Um, but we are able to affect it. Um, it's also the same thing with the fetus in the womb. The fetus in the womb knows how to create the, the fetus, the form of the human uh, organism. It knows when to stop forming the human uh, fetus, and it knows exactly the time uh, you know, when the child is going to be born out of the fetus into everyday life. And, and from there, there seems to be an order to the evolution and to the development of, of the organism of the human body. So all of this is really just this, this really beautiful time and space that we are participating in, but there are certain instructions and there is an order, there is an intelligence to the information in which we are a uh, participant of. The, so, so let's go to the next part. So the hologram of this experience that we are participating in, which we call life, um, the human organism manifests into awareness. So, so what, what is occurring from the fractal 
level of source, it is manifesting into its awareness. It is so it's it's selected collectively by the intelligence of the morphogenetic field, because there is just the way the the worm knew how to create that eye because it, it required it knew that the organism in order for its highest survival it needed that eye, and so therefore all of the cells of this organism work together to create what is necessary. So in that same way, we as these human organisms, we as these cells are manifested intelligently into this uh, major organism, which is the planet Earth, that we are participating as a part of a whole. So our life experiences, in essence, we are selecting them we we will we so we think we're selecting them but this is we are we are contributing and we are participating in an intelligent instruction manual uh, to the manifestation of yourself as a, as a human organism um so uh, it chooses the experience which produces the highest potential collective evolution so every single human organism on this planet is designed genetically and etherically as a whole organism specifically for the role that assists in the experiences that will contribute to the collective evolution. So the morphogenetic field is an infinite exploration of this collective evolution. This is what we are experiencing collectively and together as we evolve. The morphogenetic field provides the mechanistic instructions, but also an ability for an organism to explore and experience higher forms. So this, in essence, is uh, exactly what we are here to um, experience through the human experience. And the selection process of experience is occurring simultaneously in multiple dimensions. It can change and as it is observed and stimulated. Okay, just like the planarian uh, worm was able to know that it needed to create an eye, just how the fetus uh, develops exactly as it should for its conception and its for gestation process, just as uh, collectively we are experiencing these lives, the way we observe and we stimulate this organism, we are creating and we are affecting ourselves, the fractals of ourselves on multiple dimensional planes. The ancestral memory informs the organism, but just like um, uh, just like uh, epigenetic data, it's not a finite blueprint of data. So when the human, when this source fractal is uh, creating the hologram of the body, it is attaching to the genetic and ancestral memory. It comes into this organism of the planet Earth, which has its own holographic DNA, the morphogenetic genetic field of the Earth. Uh, it's, it's all one, it's all one field. And within that field, uh, we are uh, introduced into this ancestral collective by resonance. So the organism chooses to evolve through these, these kinds of resonance experiences. Resonance experiences are then able in all its dimensional expressions. So we are evolving through these interdimensional expressions. So this is how we link uh, our human experience and our interdimensional uh, activity and contact. We are essentially meeting ourselves, our fragments, fractals of ourselves in these dimensional planes. Um, and we are evolving uh, as these aspects of ourselves as well. The human organism has 13 uh, main number of dimensional expressions, uh, and we are moving through that dimensional expression, but there are infinite dimensional expressions that we are part of in a, in a, in a morphogenetic field. It's just this uh, current uh, uh, timeline that we're experiencing in this organism called Earth with the human experience. So the choice of the human organism within this contract construct defines and changes the collective experience through the morphogenetic field. The morphogenetic field stays, um, sorry, I can't see that word, uh, stays true to its intelligence uh, in order to maintain highest form, balance, and evolutionary, uh, evolutionary productivity. Okay, uh, please excuse the, the typos. Um, so, so let's uh, kind of look at what that actually looks like. Um, 
we we are like these spheres our entire multidimensional body is like the sphere within this spherical structure and within the spherical structure you can imagine the earth our human bodies are participating here there are millions of course uh, of, of us here on this earth that participate in this organism called earth and collectively uh, within one of these tiny organisms is uh, is infinitely that same structure and this self similar organization is shown in the entire multiverse which we participate in so in this tiny little construct here is for example uh you know uh, ourselves um and then each other and then our family network our ancestral memory and then the collective memory of the earth let's say the akashic record information data and then we go into the higher dimensional planes from the eighth dimension into the 13th dimension where we begin to access higher forms um or manifestations of ourselves within those again I'm saying ourselves because as you can see, we are one organism. There is no separation between us and another. Um, so I, I'd like to make that very clear because this is the kind of understanding that we need to have this moment moving forward uh, in order to clarify the focus of the collective as we're beginning to work with the morphogenetic field. Every single one of these planes that our body is, this is exactly how our body looks like, um, it, these are spherical planes that are, of course, an, uh, expressions and holographic projections of each chakra. Each chakra in the system is um, managing uh, and filtering and processing vibrational frequency from the lowest to the highest dimensional plane. So we actually have less ability to affect through the morphogenetic field the more we are in the lower systems the second third fourth first second uh sorry uh, first second third chakras are the ones that manifest the main terrestrial physical three-dimensional plane and the more we stay in those and the more we are um unaware of the higher aspects of ourselves we limit how much we can actually affect the collective the more we access the heart the throat the third eye begin to train and clear out the the energy and uh, blockages which are limiting thought forms within the physical body we can begin to activate and expand our perception that's what it is through the integration of those thought forms again we are we are transmuting in effect, thought forms of separation into unity. That's that's all we're doing. How we truly affect the morphogenetic field, though, is by over here, the seventh and the eighth chakra. This sixth to the eighth chakra are the main centers where we actually begin to affect the morphogenetic field because these this is the junction point in which this infinite source is becoming organized and projecting into the physical plane. So if we don't have mastery over these top uh, aspects of ourselves, we will not be affecting, we will not be creating in a sense, we are counter creating. Um, and so, where we actually have power as humans is to begin to navigate and function and interact in these higher realms, which is happening inevitably, collectively, because of the current state in the universe that we are moving through. So all of yourselves on all these dimensional planes are constantly interacting. And what that actually looks like is like this. You are at the center of this morphogenetic field and your fragments are all your past lives of course there is no time time is not linear it is a spherical form that projects into this space like this you have your fragments and then you have your aspects let's say your extraterrestrial aspects uh you know your arc all of this information is also then organized in archetypes through vibrational frequency and there are 13 main uh, vibrational frequencies which we are in interacting and, and evolving through at this time so what's the connection between this and our star seed um, uh, uh, aspects of ourselves let's just say and i'm please don't um um, I use these images just as a reference point for what we uh, commonly believe is interdimensional beings manifesting in our experiences. Um, but there are 
you know, any number of manifestations, what we really want to uh, look at and focus on is a vibrational frequency. Um, the spectrum of species that we are experiencing is a manifestation of vibrational frequency from the lowest, most primal form to the highest, most expansive. And how we define that vibrational frequency is by contraction and expansion, just like we are working in these fields within fields. Each one of these organisms either expand, and what does it mean to expand? It means that it becomes aware of itself as the whole, or it only sees itself as the individual. That's the, the two different definitions of that. So either one of these spectrums of species are uh, the manifestation of that. And they are operating in those dimensional planes from the eighth up to the 13th dimensional plane. We have access to that based on our vibrational frequency. So when we have any kind of experience, we are beginning to affect and work with that information. What we want to go towards now is collective unity consciousness, which means to become aware of yourself as more than just a human form. And all of this beautiful self-organized -organ consciousness within the morphogenetic field has a purpose that is specifically designed, specially designed. How many things in this entire organism went into place to create your specific physical body is just beautiful and magnificent. And you play as part of a symphony of a collective. So yourself, as a result of your ancestors, as a result of, of your, your parents, all of these things are a culmination of that information. So the physical body is, uh, you know, it's a hologram of self-organizing information again. And as you are a fractal of this infinite source, all of your aspects, all of your families make part of that resonance that resonance information that you are a part of. And we are moving collectively, uh, evolving together as that. Just like these groups of, of, of birds, for example, it, it is one consciousness that is moving this collective movement. Just like these birds know how and when to turn or move in order to move the entire whole. And they make these incredibly beautiful shapes. The human race is exactly like that, and so is our fragments. They are moving through this intelligence of the morphogenetic field. We also see this in ants and the organization of their movement and their collective uh, you know, communication. We see this in bees. We see this in mushrooms, fungi, and trees. So as you can see, we are an interconnected network that has the ability to communicate. This is where we tune into our telepathic uh, communications, which is not something uh, completely rare and, and that only one few people can do. Every single human can do that. Um, and every single human can be tune into the intuitive field. So what does it mean to become awake and aware is to activate precisely these tools as more and more in this current timeline, and this is where we come here, um, why? Why is during this current timeline we are more aware and have the capacity of tuning into these higher, higher mind, right? These higher uh, abilities is because exactly where we are in this moment of evolution. Right now, we are moving through the 13th. So if you take a look at this spiral right here, we are traveling through this, this gigantic spiral organism. And in this current physical dimension that we are sharing, you and I, we are moving through the 13th dimensional layer. So all of the constructs of our reality are based in this 13th dimensional layer. This is how information self-organizes itself in this current dimensional layer. Uh, we have the 13 uh, astrological signs. We have the 13 uh, archetypes. Um, we, and, and, the, and we can see these patterns and this beautiful structure um, infinitely in all organisms from plants um, to how fetuses develop to how the human body is structured. Uh, we are seeing this sequence in the, in the manifestation of the physicality of our reality. And as we are evolving collectively, I had a very interesting question from the talk the other day uh, asking, so does it mean that um, 
in other words, if um, I, I don't evolve or if others don't evolve, that means I can't evolve until I wait for the other to evolve. And um, that was a very important question because um, how we are evolving collectively is actually through this morphogenetic field, we have to destroy the concept that we are physical because again, you are uh, one tiny part of a collective whole and your many fragments of yourself are evolving as part of yourself. And so as you evolve, you are affecting your fragments. Your fragments are your family. Your fragments are your friends, your neighbors. Everywhere, even the, the, the time and date that you were born, the families and the cities that you live in, all of that is, is designed by resonance. So essentially you are evolving through all of that process and you're doing so collectively as well as individually. Um, one more thing I want to say about this, that we are moving from, let's say this green color is a, a lower vibrational frequency into, let's say this white color is a higher vibrational frequency. So this is how we are evolving through the trajectory of this collective evolution. And when we look at our genetic code and our genetic information, it's important to understand what is this genetic information. All of this data within the morphogenetic field is available through the DNA. The DNA is projecting holographically the system that creates your body, or, or I should say the organism product hologram uh, that you are, everything from the way that you look, the place you were born, every, every single detail is designed specifically for your, your expression, for, for, the, for the service and the purpose of the collective evolution. And what we have in our dark DNA is exactly the instructions of this morphogenetic field, which allows us to access the fragments of ourselves that we are yet unaware of. It's through this evolutionary process uh, that we become aware of these aspects of ourselves. The higher vibrational you are, you begin to see ghosts, you begin to have paranormal experiences. Um, you experience this incredible invisible realm so to speak. And it's within that, that realm that surrounds us, that is constantly moving around us as an expression of ourselves that we begin to interact with. Um, and in dream time, because when you leave your physical body, when you're dreaming, just as you will in death, you are becoming aware of yourself in all of those dimensional layers. And it's incredibly important to learn how to uh, navigate those, just like you are navigating the physical body in the physical everyday life, because all of those are participating in the collective uh, movement. Now, let's talk about what happens with DNA. And I'm sorry, this was supposed to do something fancy like pop up and then the two other pictures were supposed to um, open up separately. But what, what I'm showing here, let me see, oh, I, I don't have it in presentation mode. So sorry. Um, this, uh, what our DNA actually looks like is we, what we see here in the physical realm is this DNA structure. Um, but what happens, oh, I'm so sorry. Is, is it in the play mode? Is it in the? Um... You know, it's actually not, but uh, if I'll just go ahead and show you like this, sorry. <laughs> um, this, is, this is what we can see from our DNA, but what happens and what it, when, when we talk about activation of DNA, what's actually happening is that we, as we be become aware of ourselves in the non-physical dimensions, as we become aware of ourselves in all these other uh, dimensional layers from the eighth into the 13th, our ET fragments, angelic beings, all of that, is that we, we are activating these parts of our DNA. And essentially uh, the DNA ends up looking like a giant spherical network. So your, your entire biocomputer that is your physical body is mostly non-physical rather than just the physical. This, the mechanistic, the mechanistic uh, product of the, of the genetic code that is writing out the code to make, make your physical body is just one part of the definition of what you are as a whole, as, as a collective organism. So we actually, our, our DNA actually looks more like this. Um, in, in, in our physical body. So what does it mean to become whole, to end this? 
um, it, healing, right? So healing means becoming whole. It means becoming aware of yourself as all experience fragments. It means your choice to expand or contract is the choice of creation or contraction, expansion or contraction, creation or counter creation. And it is the application of your free will as part of this, uh, of this collective field, you are choosing through resonance within a construct. Okay, the, to change uh, your resonance, uh, then you begin to affect the collective. So how we change, how we begin to change the collective is actually by uh, changing this vibrational frequency, because only when you change the vibrational frequency can you actually begin to affect anything in this morphogenetic field. This is, this is how we begin to uh, access uh, aspects of ourselves here on these higher dimensional planes and experience what it's like to apply uh, these free will expressions. Essentially, becoming whole means becoming all the organism. That is how we are affecting and working through this morphogenetic field as one and moving collectively through that movement of evolution. Um, so that is where I will end the presentation. Okay. Um, Thank you, Geraldine. Thank um, you so let's see if there's some questions out there. Um, anyone, I, I do have people on mute. Uh, Mariana, I'm gonna unmute you. And um, okay, that was great. So let me ask you, Geraldine, um, evolution at this point in our history um, seems to be more engaged than it ever has been. What are the factors that are leading to this moment in time and the evolution that's happening right now? What are the factors leading up yeah, why is why is it speeding up now? Why are we in the midst of a huge evolutionary shift? Yeah, so um, uh, the way that uh, we are currently spiraling through the universe, it 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 moving it the entire multiverse actually is moving through this spiral form. But as as well as we're moving through a spiral form, the trajectory of that movement is looks like an infinity cycle. Okay, when we are at the center point of that infinity cycle, which we are right now, things are speeding up. And the further away we get from that point, things slow down, which we experienced historically in our lifetime, looking back at history, all the events that have happened, you know, uh, before the Industrial Revolution, before uh, technology started to, to blow up in our uh, current society. This is an example of that slowing down, going up to the speeding up rate. And so we're experiencing that speeding point in which we are merging the physical and the non-physical, and we're doing so with technology as well. Everything is an expression of unity. So we have gone from separation, so when we didn't have telephones, to the moment of connection and unity. We see that in our society. Um, so this is happening micro macro. And then internally, it's almost as if we become more aware through these phases of that evolutionary process of ourselves as one. We become aware of, of techniques to access the physical body. And we experience this cyclically. Everything is cyclical. Uh, everything is cyclical. The way our body functions, the way the liver regenerates, the way we are uh, learning and evolving information collectively is also cyclical, which is why we have ancient civilizations that have access to higher forms of information. Um, and, you know, and then, and then we kind of don't have that information for a little bit, see, uh, as we're moving through this cyclical pattern. But in fact, the entire organism is evolving through the collective, you know, as a collective. It's I just, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, finish, please. Yeah. I just want to add one tiny little thing because um, just to piece things together, so are these interdimensional aspects of ourselves. They are also part of this evolutionary process. They are also evolving, becoming aware of themselves as the roles that they're uh, choosing as this infinite consciousness to experience. So it's cyclical, but it's also spiral because it's not just coming back to where it went. It's going to another level and another level exactly so, but we are are at a turning point i feel and i think that's why we're doing this today at this time because we're at a critical point where maybe the collective has to decide if we really want to go to the next level of a of a meta-human 
super being morphogenetic wholeness or not. I think we're at this point. What do you think about that? Well, yes. I mean, the name of the game in this three-dimensional uh, plane that we're experiencing here collectively is this dualistic expression, which means that as we see these dualistic uh, uh, experiences, which causes this, this fusion in order to create the transformation, the, the, mecha the mechanism of transformation internally and externally as a collective. And, and that movement through experience is what causes evolution. In fact, this is, this is what, what we are here as as source, becoming aware of itself as all uh, experiences. This is what we're doing. Um, so again, it, it's cyclical, this process. And what we're choosing between is either contraction or expansion, love or fear. These are the little choices that we make every single moment, uh, whether it's how we feel in this moment, what we're going to be eating, what we're going to be doing, our choices for life work, all of those little things are like fractals of choices that you make that are either expanding or contracting. And this is how you are contributing to the collective evolution. Now, it's not right or wrong. You can also choose to contract. But what happens when you when the organism contracts is eventually death. Uh, because, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not moving, it's not moving, it's not evolving with the whole organism. It's the same for partnerships. It's the same, we know in two partnerships, when one person evolves and the other doesn't, it cannot stay in that same relationship anymore, it has to move on. And it's the same for all organisms and in nature. So it, we're just moving and experiencing these cycles of nature. Right, because uh, this intelligence, the morphogenetic field. Right, because we don't move, we stagnate, and stagnation is not what the flow of the universe is all about. Exactly. So, wait, Mariana, do you have a question here? Yes, <clears throat> Geraldine, thank you so much. Uh, I'm humbled by your eloquence. I love your eloquence. It's how you explain. It's just extraordinary. Um, the question I have is, if you can just talk a little bit further about the extraterrestrial DNA aspect. Um, has and how it ties into the morphogenesis process as a whole. Absolutely. So um, as I was showing uh, the, the DNA, um, the parts that I was showing that kind of appear on one side and the other side of that DNA is basically our ET or our alien uh, DNA that we become aware of. Okay, this is, this is what we're activating within this physical hologram. And as we elevate our vibrational frequency, we have access to the awareness of ourselves as these extraterrestrial uh, beings, entities, whatever you want to define them as, uh, fractals of infinite consciousness as well. And um, uh, for example, uh, the hybridization program um, is, is uh, you know, the combination of this human and these higher vibrational frequencies in order to create this new organism. So it is it is the expression of evolution, just, just like a tree uh, leaves seeds in order to grow more trees. Uh, in, it's the same way we're participating in that uh, in a terrestrial organic uh, system as well as an interdimensional organic system yeah, uh, right and so these interdimensional beings are us uh, fragments of ourselves based in, and we become aware of them based on our resonance so wherever we're at vibrationally we're going to experience that specific uh, experience we're going to become aware of them through those experiences they can be good they can be bad whatever it is um, it's it's through the resonance the idea of the human is to be able to sustain this hologram in its highest evolving form, uh, its healthiest state, uh, and be able through these experiences to continue to see itself as as infinite organisms. So we have to be able to see, uh, you know, draconians up until angelic beings, uh, you know, interact with all of these aspects of ourselves. And this is, this is what this contact is about. And as we become in contact with these beings, these ranges of species, which are organized through vibrational frequency, uh, and I guess an organization of archetypes, as I call them, um, you know, we, we are activating ourselves, essentially. We are expanding ourselves. Um, and um, whatever we are, what, what, how can I finish that? Um, yeah, so then as we are moving through this, this contact, um, we see ourselves as more. We see ourselves oh. as the whole. 
And as we expand ourselves, we expand the species and the morphogenetic field of the species as well. I mean, we contribute to an expansion, would you say? Yeah, you know, I, a species is, is kind of a limited uh, term because we are not a species really in, in reality. We are just uh, intelligence that is uh, organized, creating this hologram of a physical body, which doesn't really mean uh, much more than what, we're, what, than what really matters is what this organism is capable of. And as you saw through the chakra system and the connection to the infinite, uh, you know, uh, dimensions that, that we are, we are, we are an expression of dimensional fields. We are a manifestation of dimensional fields. That's actually what, what matters and how we navigate those dimensional fields. So I wouldn't get too caught up on the concept of species because we are ever evolving. Just don't think of yourself because species will, will get you into the idea of separation and what we want well, to do. I don't see it as separation. I see species is that we inhabit these forms, these animal sure, forms, sure. and that's the species. But it's in the process of shifting because our consciousness is awakening to greater possibilities. So that's how I see it. I mean, sure, sure. And, and the form will be continuing to evolve. It'll right. continue to change in, uh, infinitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Mariana, anything else or anybody sure. else? Have yeah, go ahead, Mariana. Sure. Just to add to that. Um, so since we're talking about the morphogenesis, morphogenetic field and morph is Greek for shape. Um, what would you say, what is the vital role of the Vesica Pisces um, in the morphogenesis process? Um, so uh, as we as we look at the form of the organisms in the collective, it seems to create uh, this spherical expression. And, and, and it, this seems to be uh, the shape that this uh, that this that we're experiencing during this dimensional timeline. And, um, you know, how how this dimensional timeline is being expressed right now, you know, there's there's a whole study behind uh, the geometry of form. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the, um, the pi, the, what is it, pi, the, the Fibonacci sequence is, is basically a wonderful, a beautiful um, way for us to comprehend how form shapes itself in these dimensional planes. Um, so the human body, for example, it has, has that it, it encoded within its structure. Uh, we have it within the spinal cord, within the different spinal, uh, the spinal nodes in the back. We have it within the way the cells develop. We have it within how the fetus is, is developing. We have it, I mean, everything from, from its uh, fetal point until its, its total point. We have it in the different organisms in this uh, terrestrial world and nature, everything is uh, uh, using this beautiful design to manifest its form because those it's the instruction manual for form within this morphogenetic field. And so we see that translated as different things. We see it translated into a leaf in the way that these networks communicating with one another and, and uh, so on and so forth. So I guess you can call it a, a kind of blueprint for the organisms within this this mass organism, this collective organism um, that, that is being expressed. 